Hello everyone, and welcome back once again to Gary's Mod. And today, the map we're going to be exploring is GM Urban Hell. Because of the somewhat similar visuals, I actually had a look on the workshop page just to confirm that it's not by the same creator as GM Ashpit. But it isn't, which means we have no frame of reference for what's going on here, and no idea what kind of nightmare this is. I imagine this is probably the last thing you want to see coming out here. I don't know if you can see that, but because of the way the fog just diffused over the corner of the building, it almost looked like it was disintegrating before my eyes. I mean, imagine being down in the basement just by pure chance when this happens. Hearing the deafening roar and being sure that you're dead. Only to come out and find that this is your new reality. It's the kind of thing that would probably very quickly make you wish you hadn't survived. This yellow car being pretty much the only indication with an eyesight that you actually are still seeing in color. On GM Ashpit, it took quite a bit more searching before we found anything to give us that kind of catharsis. And in this new world, this is the kind of thing you latch onto for catharsis. Now, where do we even start going? Look at these huge buildings silhouetted against the fog. If that is indeed fog, for all we know, it's ash. All we can really do right now is look for open doors or windows and try and follow whatever landmarks we can. We've got an open fence up there. What looks to be a bunker entrance right there. Can we get in? Ah, uh, no. Of course, whoever's inside either isn't sharing or didn't make it. Uh, man, I look up and see these dark shapes silhouetted on the rooftops, and for a second I think there's someone there. I wonder, if you were in this situation and you were to see that, and mistakenly believe that there's other people walking around on the rooftops, would you be startled by it? Or would it be more a moment of joy followed by disappointment? Hmm, that's weird. Power's still on. And the vending machines still work! I feel like I maybe shouldn't be drinking whatever comes out of there, but... Well, at least we're not gonna go thirsty. For a while, anyway. A glow from around the corner always makes me nervous about the source. But speaking of source, the effect that fog has in this engine means that I actually kind of don't really need a flashlight. And I'll be forgoing it as much as possible just to kind of take in the atmosphere, although... Oh no, I got excited for a second. I was hoping this would lead to a whole concrete tunnel network. Or drains or something. Anywhere underground where people might have survived. Oh, look at this visual. I've had dreams exactly like this. Ones where I'm in the middle of some courtyard with windows looking down. Dark, foggy weather above, and no way out. Although, it seems in this instance we do at least have some options for mobility. Still, when I look up at this, it's hard not to feel eyes looking down at me. Another vending machine? Another free soda. Apparently something about a nuclear blast also causes them to stop accepting change. Oh, who am I kidding? You know those things are taking full bills. Yeah, that's so weird. The lights are still on. That's the kind of thing that would have me start questioning, did I really survive? Maybe this is some kind of purgatorial punishment. Imagine walking these streets, seeing them like this, but to me it's entirely new. 
what if this was a neighborhood that you had known? See, when it opens up wide like that, and you can't see anything but the fog taking up your entire field of vision, maybe a building just poking through the edge. Structures like this kind of feel like an anemone. Like you can hide within and stop whatever huge creatures you feel are out there from getting you. I almost feel a weird instinct to run from cover to cover. It's a real shame that we can't go in any of the apartments themselves, because that constant noise of the wind whipping between the buildings is really starting to get to me. Both emphasizing my loneliness while being so deafening is to be just this... It, it's just irritating enough, and just loud enough, to really wear on me over time. I liked the atmospherics at first, but now it's almost like the world is taunting me. Oh, you don't want a quiet world to occupy your thoughts? Well, here you go. Instead of no sounds for eternity, you can have one sound for eternity. Although... If this really isn't some kind of purgatory and I actually did survive whatever happened here... Against all odds being the only one... I would have to ask the question of... How long is that going to be? I really doubt there's much that's edible here, well, except for the calories from the soda machines. Every time I see a warm glow from around the corner, I keep hoping that I'll find a fire with a bunch of survivors huddled around it just for someone to talk to. And this is me kind of losing it after only being in here for a few minutes, so imagine knowing that this is going to be your reality forever. I actually imagine the first few minutes would be the worst, as it's sinking in that this is all you're going to have to look forward to. Wondering if it's just here or if it's the whole world? Knowing that it's most likely the latter, although... The light from the fog is now gone, and I can't actually hear the wind anymore. Oh, there we go. It comes out on the other side. I am both relieved and somewhat concerned, because I feel like there has to be some kind of underground. Some kind of place where more survivors could live. But in the end, it just deposits me back out here. All of this is so linear that it almost feels like it's meant to lead me in a certain direction. But where? truck, a wheelbarrow, and a pit. First instinct is that they were probably going to use this for mass graves, although no one ever got the chance to make any deposits. Which makes me wonder, maybe I wasn't just in the basement by chance. Maybe I was there because there was some kind of early warning. Maybe we knew that it was coming. But if that's the case, it seems even more unlikely that I would be the only one to make it. Unless, let's start speculating about our own character now. Maybe I made sure I was the only one to make it. This has to open, right? Hang on. No, it doesn't seem to. Yeah, this doesn't appear to be moving no matter how I go at it, so I guess we move on. Now that is weird. Bunch of wrecked cars at the bottom of the pit. It's like the soil is actually eroded down so we can see the foundations. But why is it acted so irregularly, unless... Hmm, maybe... Maybe most of the time, we're not actually walking at ground level. I was thinking that maybe all of this is actually debris that's been deposited here. Maybe we're actually walking several stories up. But then you have things like this, which... 
I suppose could have been carved out later, but then... Uh, the less sense this starts to make, the more I start to think more about that purgatory theory. Maybe a nuclear apocalypse was always my greatest fear. And because of my shortcomings in life, this is my eternal punishment. Doomed to wander endless mazes? Searching for anyone else? Searching for any other stimuli besides wind and gray? And the occasional soda, I believe. Tracking? Why are you doing this right now? This place is so weird. These, these interiors make no sense. Like, they're not simulating anything. They just kind of do exist. So with that being the case, for all I know, this is just deposited mountains of ash that I'm walking on. We're back around to where we started. I guess let's try an alternate path then? Yeah, no, definitely, definitely this has all been deposited because look, there's a window going underground. We're currently walking at least several stories up. But wait, no. No, I've seen this before. No, I was just here. <sighs> the can doesn't lie. Everything just different enough to make me think I'm making progress. But just similar enough to not be able to gain a sense of direction. You know, if this really were to be purgatory, this would be perfect for an ironic punishment. The kind of thing that provides just that small amount of motivation to keep wandering forever. Only to never be rewarded. These streets are such a unique kind of sensory deprivation. The kind where you can see, hear, taste, smell, feel. But you're just desperate for anything to break it up. It actually kind of reminds me of about ten years ago I was really sick. And, you know, all things being relative... I was kind of thinking that might be a tunnel for a second. <laughs> when you're sick, like I was, the bathroom floor feels like the most comfortable place in the world. And I imagine how I might start to develop my sense of comfort in a world like this. Maybe lying across the bench in the back of this car? Maybe a golden car will be one with the windows still intact, so I can't hear the sounds of the wind quite as loudly? If there is any way to get up on top of these buildings, I can't figure it out, so I'm gonna go for my noclip run now, and just try and see if there's anything that I haven't been able to access. Hmm. Well, there is detail up here. Detail even outside of what would be visible to the player, although it does just terminate at a certain point. We can get on top of the taller ones as well. Ooh. Tracking, don't do this to me now. Did not like that at all. Looking down and seeing the buildings descend into the fog, not even really able to see the bottom. At the best of times, just... Structures on the rooftops poking above the clouds. Oh, that's disorienting. We're not meant to be able to look down and not see the ground. Oh, but... We clearly are meant to be able to get here because this is open. Why would this be here otherwise? Oh, we're actually at the top of that endless courtyard. Uh, maybe there's something around here we can see? There's quite a lot of detail on this rooftop. But now I'm nervous. A lot of corners. A lot of empty, dark rooms. But nothing inside any of them. All right, everybody, I'm recording this the next morning, and unfortunately at this moment, I don't have the ability to plug in the index. But I was doing a little bit of a noclip run just to see if there was anything I missed. 
And I was flying along the edge of the map, and I saw what looked like a weird green glow coming from the inside of a couple of structures on this rooftop. Now, as I have a look around, I can see this looks a little bit more complicated than some of the other spaces we've seen up here. So if we do a full 360, it seems like this one here is self-contained. Now, that's weird. Also, why am I getting this flashlight bug? I didn't even pick anything up. Oh, it's my regular flashlight. Okay. Let's have a look. Also, sorry, I haven't plugged in my recording keyboard either, so you're going to get maximum clickety-clack. Now, what is all this? Why would all of this be at the top of a set of apartment blocks? This is all walled off. Is there any way to get into here? Uh, right here. Double doors with what looks like some kind of keycard reader. Which enables us to get into this little courtyard thingy. But once again, why is all this here? I almost expect to find a control room with a bunch of cameras watching everything I do. Almost like I've woken up in this abandoned city and they're just monitoring me to see what I do. power still being on in some places, all this equipment up here, that really starts to give sort of Truman Show vibes. Okay, we can't seem to interact with this wall panel. There was something similar down in one of the garages below. Can't interact with these. There's our Project Zomboid Bleach. Maybe coming up here is supposed to be some kind of reward. Can't interact with any of this stuff. Well, that's weird. We try no clipping. Uh, there's some stuff below. But I just don't see anything else for us to do up here. Also, as I'm no clipping around the sides of the map right now, I'm actually able to see, which I wasn't in the fog before, that there's a building that's significantly taller than the rest. What is all this about? But of course, there's nothing up here. Why has the creator made this building in particular so tall? I mean, even from the next tallest building, you'd never be able to see anywhere close to the top of this in the fog. Look at that. I've been going with the whole nuclear apocalypse angle on this. But the workshop page actually talks about this being inspired by a town in China that had such poor air quality that it looked like this from so much smog. Imagine this whole place actually just being abandoned just because of emissions and ash falling all over the city. No great disaster, just a loud evacuation and then quiet forever. So that was GM Urban Hell, and I don't have a whole lot more to say about it, but honestly, I think that's kind of the point. Surviving a nuclear apocalypse, having that euphoria of having the noise stop and thinking, I made it, and then crawling up to the surface and this is what you find? And it goes to show that in Nuclear Armageddon, your choices are death or despair, then death. Even in spite of its small size, this might be the most alone I've ever felt on a map. For a couple of reasons. First of all, because the nature of this implies that not only will we not find anyone else here, we won't find anyone else anywhere. It's over. For all we know, we are the last living person on Earth. And all we have to do is wander these wastes and wait to die. 
Almost makes you wish we just skipped the waiting. And also because there's so little else to distract you. There have been plenty of maps that felt really isolated, but all of them, you know, I had things to look at, things to do, things to explore. But here, everything that looked like it might lead to something was kind of just more of the same. I was desperate for a story to tell myself, and this world just isn't going to give it to me. But just because my character is screwed doesn't mean I have to be. So let's move on to the next one. Welcome now to Trouble and Terrorist Town, Urban Ruins. A map set in the aftermath of a giant flood in a city. And this is actually something I don't think I've seen in Gary's Mod before. A map that's actually totally flooded. I get the feeling that if we were to step outside right now, we wouldn't be so lucky as we currently are to only be ankle-deep in water. I'll have to have a look around from the windows to see where we can access. It looks like these convenient buoys are preventing us from exiting the map edge, but... Yeah, it looks like the water outside is quite a bit deeper. We're probably not on the ground floor right now. Let's head out and see what we can see. Yeah, definitely not. Uh, well, I guess higher ground is better then, right? Oh, but we have to see everything. Even though this is an original map, it's crazy how something like this can completely change the way a map feels. Or any environment, really. This is why I've always been really fascinated with doing stuff like this in video games. I mean, something as simple as turning the lights off in a space you're familiar with can make it feel completely different. And something like this completely changes the way you think about navigating an environment. High ground suddenly becomes so much more valuable. Low ground suddenly becomes death. And you now have to consider the idea that every building, which would have just been across the street had the place not been flooded, is now essentially what might as well be a castle on top of another mountain. I imagine that the purpose of this map is probably faction warfare, right? I can just imagine mounting a cannon on the roof of this place and firing cannonballs back and forth between the jerks in the warehouse. Now, what else can we see? Now, well, from the looks of this city, no help is coming anytime soon. And looking at this, yeah, I'm definitely getting a clear impression that we have a left twix, right twix situation going on here where each of these places is meant to be a different base, although... It does actually look like that building over there is accessible. Yeah, I definitely think we can get over there. But it might be a bit of a stepping stone situation. Uh, first we'll have to... Ooh, wait, no, there's actually a lot more. There's planks from the roof of that building over to there. And even more interiors over there. Oh, there's so much more to this than it looked like at first, but the question is, how are we going to get around? Alright, let's try this. Oh, and I'm going to once again put in the description the list of mods that I'm using, which will have been updated to include two more that I got, uh, which enable you to press buttons with your fingers and makes it much easier to pick up objects. So this is attempt number one. Okay. Box floats. That's good. Whoops! Ooh. I mean, glub. There's actually whole streets under here. They bothered to model all that. Sunken cars and all kinds of things. A whole plaza underwater? Wow, this is so cool! I would have thought they would have gone very low effort, low detail for the stuff that's down here, but 
Really, the only impediment is the lack of visibility and the fact that I'm drowning, so I'm gonna go up to the surface now. Ah. Uh, note to everyone, do not swim in floodwaters. Unless you're really cool. Now, can we get in here? No, it seems that this building is entirely destroyed, but I know I saw some 3D interiors over that way. And I'm not gonna... Oh, wait, no. No, there is actually an interior here. A newspaper. Which may actually be readable, but I likely will not be able to in VR. I can't even get close to it in VR. It's pushing me away as I reach out. Okay, there's a ladder on the back of that rooftop. So I bet if I can swim to there, I can climb up and drop down into those buildings. Ooh, there's even an alley behind it. I'm honestly, the most impressive thing about this map to me so far is everything that's underwater. That they've actually bothered to create the map that deeply and then literally make it deep by submerging it. Somebody cared about this map. Hmm, that might make a better raft. Although, even if I did manage to get that to work, I'm not sure how I'd actually go about propelling myself. Somebody's hung a rope over the edge here, which means... We can now access what looks to be the second highest ground on the map from the lowest ground. This base may actually be more useful than it looks at a glance. Not an interactive button, but... Yeah, see, that's the thing. When you take something as simple as a city map and decide to submerge it, especially during actual gameplay, it completely changes the way you have to think about things. Things like completeness of information, you want to get to high ground so you can see what everybody else is doing. How you're actually going to get from one side of the street to the other because you're super vulnerable in the water and you can't see anything. You might actually have to do some engineering. Actually, thinking about it this way kind of reminds me of an idea I had back in high school for a game mode for Gary's Mod. Where basically you'd have a map with all different capture points and all kinds of different terrain like hills, mountains, lakes in the middle. And you'd go out and you'd fight to capture these capture points, which would grant you resources over time. But back at base, you'd have other players working to basically use those resources to construct all kinds of new vehicles and weapons, which would have to sort of not only be able to fight and defend against other players, but also manage the terrain and be able to work in those environments. And in that way, it would be kind of an ongoing arms race. And I bring that up because I could see something like that working on a map like this. You have all these different bases, you have the unique challenge of the waterways connecting them, and the challenge of the different advantages and disadvantages of each of these locations that you can occupy. I could see something like that working really well on here. I guess that's sort of what From the Depths became, but I'm not sure if that has multiplayer or not, and it's very complicated, so it has a pretty small community. Uh, drop down? Oh. Ooh, the inside of this place is no kind of base. Unless you have gills. You ever seen footage of those drones exploring shipwrecks? The way the flashlight just sort of slowly rolls over objects, revealing them as they come through? Motes of debris floating in amongst it. Really weird knowing that people once inhabited this place having no idea what it would one day become. Of course, a coffee shop is a little bit less eerie than that, but still the vibe is captured. Now let's swim over. And I think first we'll see about... Oh no, no, this actually has an interior. Let me in. I can't seem to get in this window. There must be some other way. Although these are plenty wide enough to shoot through, which is what I imagine they're actually for. Or maybe we can... Yes, we can actually get in below! Ooh. 
Well, I'll tell you what. If there's a way in down here, this could actually be one of the more useful bases in the game, and I'll tell you why. If the only way physically in and out is through, yes, the underwater, then you could actually live in here unknown to everyone else. So well, I guess you'd be... pretty visible from the windows. That was just a board creaking, and in a situation like this, boards have every right to creak, but it was still creepy. Uh. Now that's comfort. Having an object that holds you just above the water. Yeah, this is pretty nice. This feels like you're... Stop. This feels like you're meant to live in here for a while. Just kind of bide your time, you know? Or maybe it's supposed to be a secret stash, a place where you keep all your loot that isn't in the obvious place when they come to raid your base in the middle of the night. Here I am talking like this is some long-term thing and there's a day-night cycle. Also, that's just a really weird image. A stairwell that completely obstructs its staircase in water. And so it looks like just a hallway. There's a way out on the opposite side. Which can be used to gain roof access. And therefore access to the higher facility. Crouch down, crouch down, crouch down. I don't know how much more I can crouch. Uh. Okay, I can actually just barely fit horizontally through that window. But yeah, this looks like a nice either sniper's perch or a nice shadowy spot to spy on the place across the way. Maybe good to use for the people in the warehouse or that apartment building right there. Then again, it's dark enough inside that building that you'd never know if somebody was staring back. There's a creepy thought. Also, I'm pretty sure this building in particular is haunted, so we're going to leave now. Alright, next up is Warehouse. Let's see, what have they? Uh. Do not try to dive into floodwaters either. You never know what's just below the surface. Cars, debris, alligators... Of course, I'm now realizing that a place like this, a stealth insertion is certainly not out of the question. Imagine there's some folks up on the walkways, looking down, standing guard. You come up with your suppressed rifle, pew pew, pew pew, and sneak in. Uh, doesn't look like we can actually get up that way. We need to use this ladder over here. Oh, we got lots of ladders in here. This place does have some verticality. And again, I'm seeing the advantages and disadvantages to holding everywhere. You'd have to be more observant, but you do have only the one entryway to watch. Alright, so here's the thing. I had actually finished this record session. This is going to be a little bit of an insert. And I came back to see if you could actually read those newspapers in-game. And I think I may have discovered a little something. Ooh. And I've discovered a little something just now. You can actually close those doors. Makes this place a little bit more useful for defensive purposes. But if we come down here and jump down into the water. Hidden submerged door. I really wonder how much else like this there might be on the map that I'm missing. But let's, oh boy, trying to swim downward and climb a ladder downward. This is like the worst of every world. And get down. Ooh, I really hope these aren't the same sewers from GM Shambles. Oh, I'll have to crouch down. Okay, we can come out here. 
But it goes even further. Wait, uh, my head's going through the ceiling. This is tough. Uh, I'm in some kind of little chamber. Uh, maybe this is just here to... Maybe this is just here for breathing in regular gameplay? Let's head back down. Uh, is this as headache inducing for you as it is for me? Oh no, there's definitely alligators in here. What else would shoo through solid metal to maneuver around better in sewers? <sighs> There's a grate up above. Maybe that can be opened? If something comes out of the darkness right now, I swear. Ah, oh, right here. Let me out. Hmm. Where does this come out? Ah, over here. Right beside the opposite base. It goes straight underneath. Okay, so I'm starting to see the usefulness in this. It can either serve as an escape tunnel in the event of attack, or it can be used to sneakily enter the base even if the doors are closed. Ooh, music. Okay. Well, this place is clearly winning in the luxury department so far. And we do have straight-up roof access, which probably makes you pretty vulnerable to everywhere else. Or maybe not. I mean, I guess if you can... You're vulnerable at first. From right here, you can see pretty much the entire map. But if you were to make a run for it, it would really pretty much be a one-on-one -on -one with this place. Although I definitely think you'd still be at quite a large disadvantage. Oh, look, they even have a boat launch. Okay, so that's the naval base of the map. Now we just got to see about what's over there. Leap! I am so unbelievably graceful. Let's step up here. I guess this place does have a dock as well. I guess in some way they all sort of do. <sighs> if this place has some kind of insect infestation on top of everything. Oh, this is spooky. And it just got spookier. Open elevator shaft. I wonder if this leads somewhere. There's also a ladder heading upward. But not much to do back here. What secrets do you hold? And I say that in a context where what secrets you hold more or less says what advantage do you offer the holders of this base? Yep. No! Ugh, I was on it. Why didn't I latch on? Yep. Oh. Can actually access the upper floors. It's just a little bit difficult in VR. That rope goes up to the roof. Now this is a true sniper's perch. These two get into a firefight from across the way. Maybe a couple of people on the roof of the warehouse taking cover behind those metal things. Meanwhile, I'm right here with a perfect flanking position. Yeah, this is a great place to thin the crowd. The map is labeled as Trouble in Terrorist Town, but I can honestly see so many more uses for, like, Fortress Wars-type gameplay. Judging by these views, I'm starting to think that the tower probably is the most coveted space for its completeness of information and firing lines. But maybe it's not the best place to have simply because everyone is always coming for you, and so it's just a constant siege. Huh. 
That startled me a little bit. Uh, let's get up on the roof. But this, this right here, this is some place you could hold. Because, look, you're looking down, you have access, you have firing lines straight onto the ladder, the only way up here. And because you're the highest point on the map, no one from another property can actually shoot you. It's one of the few places that you can be the closest possible thing to completely safe. This is really cool. I feel like this has been one of those maps that transports me straight back to middle and high school, just freaking out over all the possibilities for how gameplay could actually work on here. It's been so long since I've really had the time for multiplayer, but honestly, I can just see so much potential in something like this. This is a really cool map, and I really appreciate it for how it just encourages such different thinking from other maps. I'm coming back to this place in the middle here, since I now have kind of a better idea for what this map is all about. And now I can confidently say this is probably one of the harder places, but the one that affords you the most opportunities. You have easy access so that you can kind of choose your targets and go to anywhere directly without having to worry about being fired on by everyone else. However, you are always being fired on by everyone else while you're in your base. It's definitely not a place you want to stay, but it is a place for the people who are down and out to get back in. I mean, look, that is such an inviting port to go and do some raiding. Man, this is a lot of damage for a flood. Makes me wonder if the flooding isn't just a symptom of some other massive disaster. But either way, humans being humans, we have not stopped fighting afterwards. Ooh, there's actually a ladder on that building over there. I hadn't even realized... Yeah, there's the fountain. That's probably the plaza. Yep. I was real worried about hitting that truck. Wonder what we get if we go over there. Yeah, we can actually walk onto the roof. Hmm. Now, this is definitely, like, the least advantageous base to have, because you're so far from anything, everybody can shoot you the moment you poke your head out, and they are going to for certain. But maybe you're kind of under the radar. Maybe you bide your time. Maybe you wait for the herd to thin itself a little bit. Well, anyway, that has been two post-apocalyptic maps. And this was really fun, a cool opportunity to explore a couple of maps that I wouldn't have normally done in the course of this channel. But a shared theme. The first one was real existential horror when it comes to surviving the apocalypse and realizing this is going to be your life now. Well, this one actually seems kind of sick in a Waterworld sort of way. The first one was kind of an existential nightmare in how empty the aftermath of the apocalypse is. While this one was a little bit more sick in the Waterworld sense, this was actually pretty awesome. I could imagine myself having a lot of fun on this map, but it wasn't without its spookiness. And you know what? Wait. I've just realized I never actually checked out what was at the bottom of this elevator shaft. It's a whole flooded floor. with an inviting open door. Ugh. Oh. Oh, this. There is an underwater entrance. Down below here. Oh, that's cool. So you even have reason to do like recon to send people out to go diving and scrounging down here for all kinds of alternative methods of travel. Ways where you won't be spotted as easily. Uh, but a whole set of apartments submerged. That is a creepy thought. Listen to the seagulls and the ocean that stretches off into nothing. 
Actually, if we look off this way, it looks like there is land over there, so, uh... Those survivors who are able to travel between buildings and still choose to fight each other in a fortress war? They're doing it for the fun of it, and I respect that. But, if you like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. If you have any ideas for other videos you think I should do, the best place to suggest that will be at the Discord, which I will link in the description. If you want to try either of these maps out for yourself, those links will also be in the description. And as always, I will see you in the next one.